Man, it's been a long time since I've done the spinner Rooney. Named after Booker T. <laughs> if you know, you know wrestling, man. The spinner Rooney. And I named my car iJob. If you know, you know, man. Wrestling. Japanese culture. It inspires me. But, anyways, this your boy, the American African man. Been a long time since I've done the spinner Rooney. Um, you know, today I weigh in at what? 268 or something like that but um it's not about that the truth is even though i weigh 268 i'm at that level where it's like i'm feeling myself again you know like i'm okay i definitely want to get down though further I'm still in this water fast you know day 16 of my water fasting again series but this is like what day six yeah day six yeah and about 12 hours or so, well, I think 16 hours. Yeah, we'll reach the beginning of day 17 of the water fast to get serious, but we would have completed, I don't know, I'm trying to calculate this shit. We would have, we would have completed 12 days, uh, seven days of this current water fast, yeah. And you know, being 268, I think I want to get down below 250. But at the same time, with my mentality of this water fast is that I'll eat if my body needs food. With that sort of mentality, I'm gonna keep water fasting until I get to where I wanna get to or until I'm ready to start jogging like 10 miles a day sort of thing, you know? And the funniest thing is before I started all this water fasting, I think before I went to Nigeria, yeah, I think it was before I went to Nigeria, there was a period of time in which I was um, jogging like five miles in the afternoon and five miles at night. But I think it only lasted two or three days. And I was going to the gym. And I was actually okay. No, 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 no. On the second or third day, that's when I actually injured my foot, you know. My friend called it a foot splint. <laughs> it's like a shit splint, but in the foot. I don't know what it's technically called, but I had that. And it lasted for like a week. So I stopped running. I stopped jogging, I mean, and... Uh, I decided to just start doing strength training only because I couldn't use my foot for fear of further injury. But you know, my foot is fine now, you know, and I'm ready. I'm ready, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready to get that jogging in, you know. But um, one day at a time, right now I'm fasting. I want to get this weight down, you know. You know, I, got, I still got a lot of fat, you know. It's not fun, it's not fun moving around with all this, you know? So, yeah. We doing it though, we doing it, you know? I was just, uh, I, I decided to record today, this video, because I was just thinking about something that's very important, okay? I was thinking about, uh, like the will that I have, right? I've gained weight back several times in the past three, four years. Several times, okay? But I have, like, this will to win. And that's why I can't lose. Like, I can't. Now, I was thinking about, like, where did it come from? Because it wasn't always there. So what happened, you know? And I remember that, first of all, all praise be to God. Like, definitely for me, I must say that without God, I lose. Like, I lose and I lost, right? But because I have God and because he's blessed my journey, I keep on going. It works for me. I can't speak for everyone, but it works for me. But aside from that, even though that's the first and the major thing, aside from that, you know, at some point, I just reached a point where I realized that I could, I could win. I can win. So what? I was 475 pounds when I was thinking about all this. I didn't care about all that. I just knew that it's either I do this so that I can have a happy, healthy life as long as I'm here on this earth, or I can continue to struggle, be unhealthy, be, you know, which was contributing to unhappiness. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, which one do I want to give in to? And I, and I told myself, like, you do realize that this is a commitment like, forget all the other commitments you've made in this lifetime. This is the commitment. 
and you have to commit to this over anything else. Anytime you see yourself falling off or waning, you have to give yourself back that time that you need to get back into the game, you know? I have no coaches. And again, this is just my own personal thing. I have no coaches. I have a lot of cheerleaders. I have a lot of supporters. And the cheerleaders and supporters, they have been very helpful, very, very helpful. You know what I'm saying? And I'm grateful for it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't really talk enough about my cheerleaders and my supporters, but it really does help, you know, when you have cheerleading and support, you know? Although I'm a very solo person, kind of like a hermit, I just do my own thing. I'm very independent, you know what I'm saying? Um, like getting on YouTube, talking, talking to this camera, something that I never did. Back in the day, I used to be the cameraman, you know? Now I do it both, right? But all this sort of stuff, man, at the end of the day, the support helps, you know? Some people call it accountability. For some reason, I don't like it. Like, I don't like to look at it like that. Cause I'm like, this is my personal life, you know? I'm accountable to me. And I think that's what's so big for me is like holding myself accountable to myself. Like telling myself that, hey, there's a part of me that wants this. And me not denying the fact that life is good when I'm healthy, like undoubtedly <laughs> the short time I've spent, you know, below 250 and all that was the best part of my life. Like undoubtedly last year was the greatest year of my life. It's just the truth. And before last year happened, 2020 was the greatest year of my life. So since I've been at a lower weight, healthier, able to move around and do things, get up and go. Life has been better. So why now would I quit on what I've already seen in the experience? And being that I know how to lose weight, why act as if I can't do it? Yeah, it might take me a day to get back into a fast or a week or a month, but I'm gonna do it, all right? And the longer I procrastinate, the longer I know I'm gonna have to grind to get it, all right? A lot of times I shoot myself in the foot. But guess what? I don't sit there and dwell on that shit. I get up and I go. Because at the end of the day, I have to get up and go. So what's the point of living in regret and dwelling on the past? You know? The only past I'm going to dwell on is the good parts of the past. You know what I'm saying? I spent a large part of yesterday and today just looking at my videos from last year and around this time. That's when I was in my pinnacle, you know? June, July, that was my greatest times, you know? I was running my fastest times. I was hitting the gym. I was eating good food and I was keeping my weight down. I was traveling, you know, going on vacation, living, you know, a nice bachelor lifestyle. <laughs> it is what it is. I, I was enjoying life. I was shopping life, you know, shopping life game. And then uh, that's just what I have to focus on is like, it was good. It was a good feeling, good moments in life. And I was still balancing everything else from work and everything else, family, friends. I was balancing it all. But it came at a time when I took control of my weight and I maintained good weight and I cared. I got on that scale and I faced reality. You know, even during that summer, last summer, there was times when my weight crept past 240. Then I would get, I would start grinding 10 miles a day, doing everything I need to do, cutting down on food, you know? It was a slow, gradual process, but it all happened. There was a time even when I went to 260 and came back down, you know? It's a battle, but it's a battle worth having. We battle so many things in this lifetime, but there's battles that are worth fighting, you know? There's wars that are worth fighting, you know? Fighting for your life is always a battle worth fighting, you know? I do it through water fasting. The funniest thing is like, I'm not a water fasting advocate. I don't advocate water fasting. And the reason I don't advocate water fasting is I don't want anyone that's unhealthy to try and do it as long as I do it, as long as they see someone else do it without 
doing all their research and for real, for real, medical supervision or something. Because if something happens, I'll never know. I'll never know. People are not going to tell me when something bad happens from water fasting. So I don't want to feel like I'm leading people down the wrong path, you know? Especially when I've had, I never blame water fasting for weight regain, right? But the reality is, easy come, easy go. Sometimes the faster you do it, the faster, you know, you come back. So, you know, water fasting could be a way of life for some people, but not everyone's the same. So that's why I don't advocate water fasting. I look at water fasting as just another tool to lose weight. There's so many tools. You can do keto diet, you can do carnivore diet, you can do water fasting, you can do sicko, you know, you can do it all. I've done it all on my journey, you know. But water fasting just is just something that works for me. Last year I started carnivore diet. I did carnivore diet maybe for like two months, on and off though. And I was able to build my body and I had a lot of energy. But carnivore diet was scary at first. I remember a lot of times I'd be running and I'd feel like a little lightheaded. And it only happened when I did carnivore diet. That never happened to me when I ran and did keto. So I was like, this this gotta be something carnivore, you know, something to do with carbs, you know. But after a while I got used to it and it went away, you know. But I remember when I stopped doing carnivore diet and I went back to it, it started again. I was like, yep, it's definitely carnivore diet, you know. But I actually loved the carnivore diet. I loved the carnivore diet. It's just kind of a weird diet because if you go out to eat with people, <laughs> social pressure is real, you know. We all experience it. You go out to eat people, you're like, she only ate the meat, you know. But the thing is about a diet, you know, it's like, it's temporary. I don't see myself being a carnivore for life or someone that wants to be in ketosis for life, but low carb in general for life, you know. Counting calories and macros for life in some way, shape, or form, I have to do it. But the moral of the story is, at some point, and don't wait for that point to be a fatal point, you have to reach a point where you say, no matter what, I'm going to do this. No matter what, I'm going to focus on my weight loss, and this is going to be my number one priority in life over everything. Me, I'm putting me first. It doesn't mean I'll neglect everything else. It's just that I put me first. When I wake up in the morning, my first thing I think about is me and my health. It's your boy, American African. Yo, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for tuning into the journey. Thanks for all the supporting, all the cheerleading, all the love. We're we going to keep going. We're going to keep going. I hope to talk to y'all five years from now. And be like, you remember this video? <laughs>